Hi guys, in this tutorial I want to show you how to use the NAPB bus in our SOC system. Many design use register to control the design. To write and read from a register we need a bus. Xilin is using the AXI bus which is very big. It has five different buses with three to five signals each. Changing the AXI bus to an APB bus makes life much easier. The APB bus has only eight signals. An address bus, a read data bus and a write data bus, two transaction signals, the P enable and the P select, one signal to indicate a write when it's high and a read when it's low, an acknowledge signal, P ready, and an error signal. In our register file, we only need to control the read data signal, the acknowledge ready, P ready signal, and the error signal. We'll discuss this further when we write the register file. In this tutorial, we will first build a SOC controller with the APB interface. The design will work on a Zinc CPU for the normal operation, but the Zinc cannot be simulated. So we will add a microblaze to work it in the simulation with software. Next, we need the models. We build an SPI master and slave just to show you how to operate two models with one bus and we'll simulate them to see that they are working. Next, we'll generate the register file to connect with the APB bus and we will make the master and the slave models with the registers file. So we will have a full model which can be connected to the APB bus. Next, we will connect everything into our top level design and we will have our full system. We will write a simple software to simulate the design on with the microblaze. This is a small software who doesn't use all the zinc feature, it just do the read and the write so we can see that our design is working in simulation. We'll simulate this design with the software running on the microblaze and we'll see that it's working. And in the last stage we'll synthesize the design, we load the design into the FPGA We'll adjust the software to fit the Zinc processor and we'll run the design. We'll start by opening the Vivado. And creating a project. We'll give it a name. RTSPI Podge will direct it to a demo folder which I created for this demo. We will not specify an RTL at this stage. We'll use the RT20 board and we have our project. Next, we will create our block design. We'll give it a name. RT SPI block design. We'll leave it local at the project. And we have it. We here will make the SOC, our SOC system. So first, we need the zinc. We'll need the Zinc processor. We use block automation. And 
and we'll use the let's GPIO to make a system. We'll use connection automation and we have our SOC system. I'm using a GPIO IP because the APB IP is a little stepson to the IP catalog family. As you could see, the block design recognized the GPIO, it connected to its peripheral interconnect, it gave it address, all automatically. The APB will not do that. So I'm using the GPIO IP to help me start my system. Now I'll add the micro blaze. I run block automation I don't need the cache in this particular design it will just confuse us and I run connection automation Usually a microblaze need a clock and a reset. Now since we have a clock and a reset for our SOC system, the auto connection will connect this automatically. And now for the star of this show, the APB bridge. Now as you can see, the block design didn't detect it and doesn't offer us to auto connect it. So we need to do it by hand. First, as default, it comes with four buses. We need only one. Now we'll have to replace the GPIO with our APB. We don't need the LEDs anymore. We need a clock and a reset. The connection automation usually does this, but here we need to do it by hand and make external the port of the APB. The APB takes Xilinx AXI, which is a very big bus, very confusing, and it reduces it to a smaller bus, an APB bus, which has much less signals, only one address bus, uh, P enable pin and select pin if we have more ports here, read data, write data and so on. We'll discuss this in more details later on when we make the register file. Now I rearrange it. We also need for our design, we need a clock and a reset. So we'll take the system clock, which is the zinc clock and create a port for it. And we'll take the system reset and we'll create a port for it. And this is our SOC system. I also add here an ILA. I'll mark this the input and the output for the APB as debug. And now the auto connection suggests that we will add an ILA. So I'll use it and we can see the difference between the AXI bus and the APB bus. Of course, I forgot to give addresses for the APB. You see the APB didn't get its addresses. So I'm assign all. And now the APB have an address and all the addresses are ready and we have our SOC system. We'll save it. We'll generate a block design.
and we can start working on our SPI peripherals. This we will do in the next video.